Okay. It is 5 p.m. This is Councilor Bill Soms calling the uh, Ledger Town Council Finance Committee to order for our regular meeting. Present are Councilor Ingalls, Councilor Malone, uh, members of the committee, and Councilor McGratton, also Finance Director Marcia Hancock, Library Director Gail Bradbury, and Administrative Assistant Roxanne Marr. And I don't see any citizens, but I'll ask if there are any citizens who wish to make comments. And Fred's here too. Great. Mayor. And Mayor Allen. Thank you. Um, I don't have any informational items and would accept a motion to review the uh, meeting minutes of April 21. As well as the special. There are two. Yep. Yeah. I motion to approve uh, the regular meeting minutes of April 21st, 2021 and the special meeting minutes of April 27, 2021. Second by Council Malone. Thank you. Any comments, corrections? None. All in favor, please say aye. Councilor Ingalls votes aye. Councilor Malone votes aye. And Councilor Solomon votes aye and the motion passes. Thank you very much. And Marsha, it's time for the finance director's report. We had our uh, bond sale last week. We have the, um, the bond refunding and the bands and, and note sale all went well. And um, we got good interest rates. And um, I don't remember, I think um, we have not told you yet about the rating. Um, we had a good rating uh, response. We have had the negative outlook removed. So the, the rating itself stays the same, um, but the negative outlook being removed Excellent helped us news. a lot. And um, that's it. I think that had a lot to do with the work that you both do. Undoubtedly. <laughs> we'll, we'll accept yeah. that. <laughs> Pardon me, Fred? I said, we'll accept that. Yeah, we'll take that. <laughs> Good. So I have a question though. Was, wasn't the negative outlook uh, due to the condition of the state and not the town? Yes, but okay. because that affects the uh, revenue that we received from the states, it also affected the towns. Um, so that has been <laughs> removed at the state level as well. So um, it, was, it was a good ratings call and it had a good result. So we're very happy. Good. Yeah, I think a lot of it, they, they look at, um, you know, they have a lot of questions and they look at the fiscal responsibility of the town and what are we doing to uh, be nimble and be responsive when, when cash flows may change or uh, COVID has an impact on us, what are we doing? And I think they overall um, were very happy with the result um, from our, what almost, was it an hour and a half, hour and 45 minute call? Yes. Pretty lengthy, a lot of detail, but I think overall result was very positive. I suspect that there may be some towns that have not had their negative outlook removed yet. And, and that's why I say what I said, you know, you can put it on the state and therefore it's on all the towns, but they don't have to take it off every town when they, when they come by and take a look because some towns could be in trouble as a result. We were fortunate. Okay. Um, anything else, Marcia? No. Yep. Thank you. That was good news. Um, I have not heard anything about uh, news or um, guidance from the state about ARA funds or anything else. Have either of you? No news? Okay. No, no, no. nothing so far. Undersecretary, uh, OPM Undersecretary Heft has indicated that we will be Guidance will be forthcoming. We are still waiting for that guidance is forthcoming. Guidance forthcoming, no date. Yeah, no, nope. and we've heard that a lot during the COVID pandemic. Yes. Yeah. So that's unfortunate. Um, so with no guidance, we don't have anything to discuss regarding the SIP. And since the budget has already been filed, we couldn't change the budget, but we would love to know that there, was fun there are funds coming our way because we have an action item on our agenda to uh, get started on that bridge. So um, 
The next item is uh, discussion possible action on property tax. So I'll start that. We have a motion. Well, it, yeah, I, I think I'll explain first and then we'll, then we'll do the motion. So when we had a similar situation with the Bishop Seabury Church, we did exactly what's on our agenda tonight. We passed an ordinance which authorized the church to receive tax exempt status. Um, and then we passed a resolution to um, abate the taxes that they had due or had paid. And that's what we have here is, is the same thing. An ordinance to um, authorize them with tax exempt status and then a resolution to abate their taxes. When we last talked about this, um, we were talking about abating some of the taxes. And I don't know why I didn't think of this, but we should be abating all of the taxes that they pay because they are a church and churches are tax exempt. So that's the explanation. And I'll uh, ask one of the counselors to make the, the motion. I make a motion to recommend that a town council adopt a proposed ordinance of the town of Ledger authorizing the Iglesia Fuente de Celebración uh, Missionera Incorporated to receive tax exempt uh, status that as states as of the date of purchase of the real property as contained in the draft dated April 15, uh, 20, looks like two semicolon. And the virtual video conference public hearing date of Wednesday, May 26, 2021 at 6.30 to receive comments and recommendations regarding the proposed ordinance to the town of Ledger authorizing the Iglesia Fuente de Salvación Missionera Incorporated to receive tax exempt states from the date of purchase of real property. In addition, adopt a proposed resolution authorizing the abatement of delinquent property taxes for the Iglesia Fuente de Selección <laughs> Missionera as contained in the draft dated April 28, 2021. Is there a second? Councillor Ingalls seconds. Thank you. Excellent job, Tom. You owe me two Thanks. for that, Andrew. <laughs> 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 oh, so hold up the um, resolution we use for the Bishop Seabury Church. We do have one that's being drafted just like this. Um, I had given it to Adriana to help us fill in the actual dollar amount here, but it would be just, just like this with the updated language for the yeah. resolution. I had the ordinance up a couple minutes ago. So I have a couple of questions. Yeah. Uh, one, first of all, I'm, I'm, you know, perfectly in favor of this. You know, we need to make the change. My question is more a technical one, which is um, why the need for an ordinance and not something just like a resolution? I don't, I can't, I couldn't explain that last time. Um, okay. We, we received guidance with Bishop Seabury Church from the tax collector and the tax assessor, uh, they did a lot of research and I believe the church themselves did a lot of research and okay. found precedents in the state where this is the way it was handled. I don't okay. completely understand it either, but with precedents, it, it makes sense to me. Okay, that's fine. I, I, um, my second- that requires that. What's that? Sorry, about? Roxanne. I believe it's per state statute that requires the town to do an ordinance. I recall that. Yeah, there was okay. a state statute. I believe that's what Mike, Mike France brought. Um, yeah. He uh, represented Bishop Seabury. Right. It was statutory. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. That makes sense. Um, my second thing is, um, Bill, you mentioned that we had talked about um, abating part of the taxes. I don't recall that. I recall that we were trying to get to the bottom of what to do with. Um, what we had already been paid and yep. then the responsibility of, of getting those funds back and having the holdings company 
Yep. Pay, yep. pay and and so um, where is all of that? So I think, as I recall, and please correct me, uh, Marsha and Fred and Roxanne, I think we were discussing nine month a nine month period where they did not own the church, and there was a three month period where they did own the church, and I think we were treating that as they owe the taxes for that three months. Do I recall that correctly? Um, they, they being who the uh, the, the new owner, the church that bought the uh, property. I I think what we did with Bishop Seabury was we negated the whole thing. Exactly. Um, I my where I think Councillor Ingalls was leading was not that churches sell all that often in town, and especially when they go from taxable to tax exempt, because that's pretty rare. Mm -hmm. um, but I, you know, more importantly, I looked up the attorneys that were involved in the transaction because I'm gonna have a conversation with them. Uh, this is, it just so happens, this is the second time that this has happened in town um, where the one in Gales Ferry was actually privately owned and then went back to a tax exempt status as yep. this has uh, during that process, I think, the title search um, should have indicated that there was a tax that was due and payable at the time of closing. So it would have come out of the proceeds uh, due to the seller and it didn't. Um, there probably is a level of recourse for the town to go to the, uh, the uh, either the guarantee fund that's held by the state of Connecticut or the errors and omissions insurance policies that cover the attorneys for an error of their of their work. So yeah. that's that's really where I think the recourse is for us if we choose to take that path. Um, but in terms of, uh, I think that the, the correct thing to do here is to uh, zero out the uh, the bill as it pertains to this church. Thank you, Mary. Yes. Okay, who decides whether or not it's a church and is entitled to the uh, tax exemption? In other words, can anybody come along and establish a church or do they have to prove something to the state that sort of designates and says, yes, you are a legitimate church? Um, I'm trying to figure out, yeah. can anybody just come along no. and do... Oh, no, okay. no, it can't be anybody. So the tax assessor um, might have been the tax collector. One of them did do the research and the due diligence to uh, verify that they actually are a church. Okay, okay. So somebody um, has done that. Okay. Yes, yeah. And that would but, include that they filed their 501c3, right? Yeah. So you so, can't just throw out a shingle. Right. And I think it goes beyond that because even if you're a 501c3, it doesn't mean you're nonprofit. It's a tangled web. Okay. Um, you have to get a letter from the IRS agreeing that you're a not-for-profit as opposed to a 501c3. And I don't know why there's a difference, but there is. Um, and in the case of a church, churches are tax exempt. So the 501c3 and the nonprofit doesn't really matter. They're protected as, as a religious organization, but then they have to be certified somehow. And I don't know what that process is. Okay, that's what I want to know. Somebody has to, has to designate that as a church. Right. Okay, okay. So, Mar Mar questions? Mar yeah, Marsha's pre previous life was in the nonprofit world. So Marsha, you might have something to add. Yeah. Yeah, um, churches are actually not 501c3s. They're, they have a different um, distinction and um, they, they are tax exempt, but they're one of the other, I don't even know if it's 501s, but um, they're just in a, in a group all by themselves. Right. Okay, okay. Okay, ready to vote? Yes. Okay, all in favor, please say aye. Councilor Ingalls votes aye. Councilor Malone votes aye. Councilor Solomons votes aye, the motion passes. Thank you Can I just much. say, I took four years of high school Spanish. 
and Tom put me to shame. So I, I thought he handled that really well. Yeah. Muchas gracias, señorita. <laughs> okay. Is there any other old business? Hearing none, we'll move on to new business. Is there a uh, motion to yes, Bill. Roxanne? Bill. Yep. Yeah. I'm, I'm sorry. Say that again. Please check your chat. Oh, okay. Uh, yes. Okay. Um, okay. Uh, is there a motion to amend the agenda under new business? Hearing none, uh, except the first motion. Councillor Ingalls motions to authorize the Ledyard Libraries to submit an American Rescue Plan grant application in the amount of $17,876 to Connecticut State Library. Is there a second? Councillor Malone seconds. Thank you. Um, Gail Bradbury is with us. Uh, I have read the, the uh, uh, file attached to the motion. And I think Gail can explain it better than I can. So Gail, if you can unmute, if there's anything you want to explain to us, um, please okay. do. Okay. Um, the, the State Library has received um, federal funds. Actually, they've received over $2 million and they've allocated a certain portion of that to give every library an amount that they can use as it was discussed to described to us, uh, they, they're looking for connectivity, inclusion, um, improving health protocols and technology. And the idea is to allow libraries to help their communities reach out to people who don't have the Wi-Fi or the technology needed. The State Library is administering the grant. They, they will be approving all of the requests, um, making sure they fit the categories that the federal government wanted. And um, they have set up several drop-in sessions for libraries to talk among themselves to see what libraries have found that they want to uh, include as part of the grant. One of the things that, that was uh, mentioned is an outdoor solar charging table where um, people could, could come with their device, plug in, charge, have electric power, and use the library's Wi-Fi. And I... I guess if there are any questions, uh, anything specific that you'd like to know, I'll try and answer that. I, I, did you mention, Gail, that it, there is no town match? It's 100% funded by the grant? 100% funded, no match, no in-kind. It, yep. it's, a, it's a gift, basically. Yep. yep. OK. Questions, counselors? Uh, and there's really no ongoing cost here. No, except um, I would, uh, based on what Gail just mentioned about an outdoor charging table, at some point that'll break or wear out. So there is a certain burden associated with it, but it's it's not immediate. So you know, every piece of equipment that you own, you have to maintain. So at some point we might have to replace that. I'll also point out um, one of the items that we are possibly looking at would be a self checkout station. And there is an annual maintenance fee to that. I think it's $450 a year that okay. we have to pay for that. So the other things you could use uh, the money for are for um, uh, plexiglass separators, cleaning supplies, and things for for the current or future pandemics. Um, did you have any plans to use funds for any we, of that? 
we're thinking about trying to look ahead to the year and order our um, cleaning supplies, um, keyboard covers, gloves, that kind of thing. We're also thinking about possibly putting plexi dividers between the computers so that we can open up more of the public access computers. Because right now we're using every other one. That'd be good. So to answer your question, Counseling Group Angles, yes, there, there are some future costs of ownership, but nothing associated immediately. And perhaps some savings, you know, things like PPE. Um, using these funds to buy PPE is, you know, we'd be spending that money anyway. Mm -hmm. Okay. Comments, questions? Ready to vote? Ready. All in favor, please say aye. Councilor Ingalls votes aye. Tom, you're mute. Councilor Malone votes aye. Councilor Sons votes aye and the motion passes. Thank you very much. Thank you. Next. Thank you, Gail. Thanks for coming. Thank you. Next item, please. I make a motion to recommend the town council transfer $25,000 from account 2109030505-5891 CNR undesignated to account number 2104011075401015 Lantern Hill Bridge to pay for Ledger's half of bridge of bridge repairs. Is there a second? second. Councilor Ingalls seconds. Thank you. Uh, so a uh, correction on the two account numbers. The first account ended in 58915, just for the record. And the second account was 2104010754015. And while I'm at it, there were a couple of typos in the prior motion that need to be corrected, but I think they were self-explanatory. So, did I work that up? I'm sorry. Um, yeah, I think you missed one in the first, and then you repeated one in the second. I think that's all right. You all speak right. Spanish yeah. well, Tom. I know, but I should. I probably <laughs> should have said it in Spanish. <laughs> Would have worked. <laughs> um, so this is to get us started on the Lantern Hill Bridge. Uh, this is taking money out of CNR undesignated. Um, there, there are anticipated increased expenses, so this is helping to cover those expenses. Um, and hopefully we don't have to spend it. Uh, maybe there'll be a miracle and we'll get money and replace the bridge, but <laughs> this is actually starting us on the road to do the temporary repair. Comments, yeah, questions? This, this is really to, to keep it passable because Stonington had indicated that they were, uh, they wanted to close the bridge if we didn't do the repairs. And we felt that access through is critical. Yeah. And um, should anybody come down that road that might be using Google Maps or whatever and is in a large vehicle, the last thing they need to find is that it ends in a dead end without a turnaround it would create a huge challenge. So um, not thrilled about doing the repairs versus the replacement as we had originally intended, but uh, we, are, we are keeping a very close ear out for the, uh, the infrastructure bill that uh, hopefully we'll hear more about shortly and see if maybe we can fast track that. And I have had conversations with Stonington that should uh, funding come in through the infrastructure bill that is anticipated that uh, we would uh, fast track this bridge. So that's all I wanted to add. Good, thank you, Mayor, thank you. Also, uh, I'm remembering the old Mystic Fire Department talking about how much longer it would take to get to a fire in Ledyard, Ledyard if this bridge were closed. Um, it would actually make Ledyard Center Fire, Ledyard Fire Department closer because actually it wouldn't make them closer, it would make Old Mystic farther away. And typically Old Mystic gets there first because of the current distance, so. We, in my opinion, have to do this. I agree. Other comments? Ready to vote? Yes. All in favor, please say aye. Councilor Ingalls votes aye. Councilor Malone votes aye. 
And Councillor Psalms votes aye and the motion passes. And next motion, please. Uh, the next is a, well, item three says discussion and possible action on tax refunds. Yeah, it's, it's actually right after that. Okay. Two, two tax refunds. Okay. Uh, I make a motion to approve two tax refunds in the combined total amount of $5,536.53, with each exceeding $2,400 in accordance with tax collector departmental procedures. Councilor Malone seconds. Thank you, Tom. So both of these were double payments uh, by the mortgage company. You'll see that in the attachments to the agenda. Um, as, as usual, they're in excess of, of $2,400. So they have to come by the town council. They're both verified by the tax collector, signed by the two parties. So I think we're good to, to approve. Mm -hmm. Questions, comments, ready to vote? Mm -hmm. All in favor, please say aye. Councillor Ingalls votes aye. Councillor Malone votes aye. And Councillor Songs votes aye. Thank you very much. And I think that's our last item. Was there anything else that I'm forgetting, Roxanne? I no, think what I, I had to remember it. were these two, so. Yep, yeah. we're good. Yep, okay. Thank you very much. Andre, we'll see you soon. See you soon. Yeah. See, see you soon, Rox. Bye. Everyone. Have a good yeah. night. Bye. Good night.